All right, students, we are now going to go into Millikan's oil drop experiment, and we're going to discuss the theory in this video. Uh, Millikan basically won the Nobel Prize in physics for the, this experiment, as well as the work that he did on uh, dealing with the photoelectric effect. And so what he did with this experiment, he basically showed that electric charge is quantized. And what that means is that it's going to come in uh, units of one, two, three, four, five, and it's not going to be uh, one and a half, two and a half. You follow what I'm saying? It's just going to come in uh, those units. It, 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 you can actually have negative charge or positive charge. And if you have all of you have an equal amount of charges, uh, both negative and positive, acting on an object, then now you have neutral charge. So you'd have zero. So you see that we have our normal stuff here where we talk about the object and the formal specification of this object uh, with these properties here, these, these uh, primitives. Uh, mass, position, time, and charge, and uh, we have Newton's universal law of gravitation here, which we will be using in this experiment, but we also have Coulomb's law here, and this is as well uh, a part of this experiment. So the aspects that we will be using will be, uh, we know that the particle is near the surface of the Earth, so we'll end up using its mass so the mass of the particle times the gravity. So that means we're going to have to calculate the, the mass on the oil droplet. That's going to be a part of this. And then, uh, just like we can come up with, you know, gravity near the surface of the Earth is G times the mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth squared. We have what is known as the electric field. So we'll use this, let's just say we have charge 1 times the electric field of 2. So the electric field can emanate from other charges uh, just as the gravitational field can emanate. And when you're thinking about this, we, we would consider the electric field like this for charge 2 to be Coulomb's constant times the charge over the radius of the charge, the distance between the charges squared. So you see how they look very similar, okay? And we were talking about this symmetry, okay? Remember the vigorous discussion about whether the, 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 the symmetry that we see comes from the logic or whether the logic comes from the nature. And so uh, that was pretty good. So. Let's so go ahead and talk a little bit more about this theory. Basically, we are going to have a scenario where we have a plate up here, and it's going to have a small hole. Okay, and this plate can take a voltage of plus or minus 500 or zero volts. Okay, so it's plus or minus of 500 or zero volts. And then we'll have another plate down here okay and it will be grounded okay so this is like a chamber or it's going to be in a chamber okay and we will spray oil droplets in this hole we're gonna atomize oil droplets they will be on the scale of a micron we talked about what a micron is it's on the level of a millionth of a meter. So it would be very, if we saw particles like this, they would look like, it would look like a dust or it would look like a, like a gas or something like that. <coughs> so this particle that we spray in here is going to have a mass associated with it. All right. And as this particle falls, under the gravitational pull, there is a force, F sub G, equals to mg. And as the particle falls, at this point, let's just say that this top plate 
is at zero votes. All right, for case number one. At this point, it's just falling, and it's going to experience a resistive force here because it's falling through an atmosphere. All right? At the time that we're going to consider uh, our experiment is when this particle is moving at terminal velocity. Terminal velocity means that the net forces acting on that particle equal to zero. So our net forces, which is gravity, and our resistive force is equal to zero. This implies that our resistive force equals to the force of gravity. Our resistive force is going to be some constant times the fall velocity. So this, if we take that, we'll put both of those in. And we'll say K fall velocity equals to mg. This is one of our equations, and we're going to use this. And notice, we are utilizing Newton's universal law of gravitation. Okay? Einstein is nice, but Newton still works. <laughs> so, um, let's continue right on. And we're going to consider the same scenario when the voltage is 500. Okay, so now we're not at this position. We're going to consider a second condition when we turn the voltage on and it's the top plate is 500 now. Okay, so now we let's just say that the particle is going to rise under this uh, scenario. So I want to erase um, some equations here. And I we're still going to have uh, gravity here and we're going to still have some vectors here so just want to make sure we can follow this so you still have the weight of the particle m times g but now this particle is going to rise under the electric field and i'm just going to call this q so it's a if the particle has a charge on it, if it doesn't have a charge, if it's electrically neutral, it's not going to rise. We talked about the properties, uh, about these properties before. Um, an electric, the force coming off, an, coming off of an electric field or the force coming off of an electric charge will not impact the mass. All right, so we talked about that. But this E field is going to come from voltage and the e-field will be the voltage in this particular case is going to be 500 volts over this distance here distance of separation of the plates okay so if i remember right the distance of the separation of plates is something like 7.8 uh, centimeters or i mean millimeters and our voltage is going to be around 500 volts so that's how we'll find our electric field. But also, this is going to have a resistive force, and that resistive force is going to act downward because it is as well traveling through, the, uh, through a, a gas or a fluid. And this resistive force is going to be K, and I'm just going to say F sub R. This is a different F sub R, but it's going to be K um, V rise, the velocity, the rise velocity. So now we're going to use Newton's laws again because we don't want to look at this when this particle is accelerating. We want to look at this while this particle is actually at a constant velocity, a terminal velocity. So let's go ahead and write this out. Our The net force is just going to equal to, and all of them are illustrated there. We have F sub Q minus F sub R minus F sub G. Okay. And since it's equal to zero, we can write all of that out. F sub Q minus F sub R minus F sub G equals to zero. Now, I want to treat this equation on the next page. So, on the next page, again, we had F sub Q equaling to 
f sub r plus f sub g. I just moved it to the, I, I moved f sub r minus f sub g to the right hand side. So let's go ahead and put in what we're looking for. We're going to be looking for this charge here. We have our electric field equals to kv rise, the velocity, the rise velocity of the charge plus the mass of the charge times gravity. Okay, so this will be the next equation that we're going to use. If I go back, I want to illustrate or I want to take this equation and bring it on over. So this is KV fall equals to MG. We're going to use these two equations in the next video to get rid of K. K is a constant. We don't know what it is, but we're going to get rid of it because we have these two equations, and we can get rid of them. And so our goal will, to, will be to solve for Q. Which is the charge.